I'm here on the Nepp Estate Wildland in England and I stopped at the local pub to talk to one of the guys who's grown up here and he's gone to school with one of Isabella Tree's children who wrote the book Wilding and I asked him so what do the locals feel about this wilding project and he said don't like it much he said a lot of them are really unhappy with it and I said still because I know I read the book and I know at the beginning when they did this people were very irate he said yeah we still they still don't like it much because they just they just let the land go it's just it's completely overgrown and you can't walk in there now and you can't um, there are a lot of sporting events that happen and we can't do any of that now and I said like what sporting events I'm thinking like maybe they had a soccer pitch and they had you know like tournaments hosted no no he was talking about fox hunting or like hunting foxes with a group of hounds and apparently you can't do that here anymore but then he tells me that actually that kind of hunting is outlawed across England you can't hunt a fox with more than three hounds so I'm like so you wouldn't be able to do it anyway so I just kept pressing him like what is it that the people don't like and he said they've just ruined the land it's completely overgrown there's thistles everywhere you can't walk and you can't hunt and you know he says we used to ride our horses everywhere and now we can only ride them on the public footpath and he goes well I mean I can because I know the family um, he said but it's too overgrown to ride my horses <laughs> So I'm going to take you on a tour. I'm going to show you on video what this incredibly wild, overgrown land looks like. And you can make your own decision about whether they have indeed ruined this land or whether the land is improved or just fine or whatever other judgment you want to make. So come along with me and we'll go exploring. And this is one of the lines that are set up in the trees so that you can watch the birds in this area without being seen or noticed by the birds, supposedly. Of course they do know we're here. And so here, for example, we have a mix of typical grass that you would see a horse or a cow eat mixed with other vegetation and various bushes and shrubs. These, they're all plants and, all plants. and doesn't the land and the animals know what plants are the yeah. most beneficial and the insects and the birds and the butterflies? Yeah. It's very I bizarre. It's, it's very bizarre. Land. Very short-sighted of humans to have an idea of a monoculture yeah. vegetation that they think is what should be on land and anything else is wild and <clears throat> overgrown and impassable yeah. and they've ruined the hunting on this land and upset all the neighbors and it's it's if crazy only the animals could communicate and let us know got too close, didn't he? Yeah, you tell him. Don't get so close to the humans. And you're curious because you're young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your mama's and your daddy doesn't want you so close. Oh, you want me to pee? They don't want us here. No. They're like, could you leave, please? <clears throat> yeah, we've been here long We'll enough. go, Bubbies. We'll go.
Oh, you want to come up here? I see. Are we in your way? Okay. Are you going to cross the path? Want to go to the other field? Yeah. Oh, that's why they wanted us to leave. <laughs> They're so communicative. You just have to listen. But you see, this is how animals will often communicate with us mm -hmm. by asking us to move mm -hmm. and asking us to listen to them. And just... most humans miss those cues because yeah. they're wanting the animal to listen to us. Mm -hmm. And then the animal's like, "You're not only do you not hear me, but you don't respect me. And so communication ends at that point. Mm -hmm. But and then people say, if you do that, then you're letting them know that you're they're the boss mm -hmm. and then you'll never be safe. Mm -hmm. And I, my approach is completely different. I say, no, no. When they ask me to move and I move, I'm showing them that I am a good person and I'm a respectful person and I'm a trustworthy person. Yeah. And that ensures us a very safe, deep relationship as we go along. kind of, uh, I would say, rough land. Thistles and blackberries and I don't know, it's just, it's, and lots of dandelions and daisies and it's just interesting land. So this is it not... Do, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like it's representative English South Downs Way land, right? You just, it's just weird. This is not what you grew up used to seeing no. when you would do your hikes through the countryside. No, not even, not even in woods, right? Woods would be bluebells and trees and very, very, you know, roughy land. This is, this is very straight, very interesting. Would there mostly be just grass on the ground? Yeah, mainly grass. From what I see and feel from the land, um, I was told it's what five, six years into this project. For me, and I was told this this whole this land was was all serviced for, you know, cattle and fertilized and pesticides and stuff. I just feel this land is recovering. This is what my horse property looks like back home in Canada. Look familiar? <laughs> Does it look a little bit wild or overgrown? Or does it just look like beautiful, diverse, glorious nature? So here is an issue. This is a public footpath. This apparently is not. And we just got told off very nicely for being in here. And we said, we didn't see any signs. It wasn't signposted. She said, well, there are signs all over. You obviously missed them. So where's the sign saying that that's a public footpath and that's a public footpath, but this one is not. Oh, here's a sign. Yes, look what it me. says. Like, don't go here. It doesn't say don't go here. It's a tiny sign that says no entry, wildlife only, and it's pointing here. <laughs> so we it assumed, yeah, no, they're no. reminding us not to leave the path. Yeah. It's... Don't go where the wildlife go. Yeah. And we didn't. We stuck so just to the path. Like so on their website, it they... No different from this trail talk about their frustration with people not sticking to the public footpaths. Yeah. Okay, now see that white mark on a tree? So when we were 
told that we are in the wrong area. She says they're clearly marked white. So I guess that's, but how would we know that no that's mess. the mark we're supposed to look for? Because nothing's labeled. We are very respectful people. I have read her book and I can't figure out where we're supposed to be. Ah, yeah. so here we are. Here's another sign. That's fine. And I can't even see that because I would have to leave the path. But I'm, in fact, I'm gonna leave the path just to show you. Look what it says. No entry, wildlife only. Again, in the wild area. And running right next to it is a public path. This is not clear. Nep estate. Nobody who comes here wants to be disturbing the project you have on here, but you've got to work a little bit more clearly and maybe talk to some more people and figure out how to mark things so that bigger, bigger someone signs. who doesn't know and has never been here can figure it out. Not so that the people who live and work here feel it's clear. But you've got a post here, you've got a post here. Yeah. If you put signs saying no public entry, service vehicles only, that would make it clear to me that this is a service vehicle path. Correct. Because otherwise it looks like a path yeah, and then the no office. entry looks like it's pertaining yeah. to the wild land. And we could also say something like this here, Disneyland rides not allowed here. <laughs> there are a lot of people walking and camping and there's a yoga class we're on right now too so obviously this nap estate is doing very well totally absolutely recommend this book i thoroughly enjoyed it i wrote all over it <laughs> It is just the best book. It has some really cool pictures of before and after. The amount of information in here is just fantastic. Thank you, Isabella and your family for the gift you have given the world.